New details on the missing Houston woman who was last seen getting into a van outside of the bikini bar where she worked as a dancer. Court documents now show that DeAndrea Ford, she was a key witness in a capital murder case. Fox 26's Sherman DeSalle joining us live now from the newsroom to break this case down for us. Sherman. Yeah, it's a lot of information. As tonight, police have no new details on DeAndrea's whereabouts. But our newsroom has managed to find out that the 21-year-old was a witness in a shooting in May that left one man dead. Four people were arrested in this case, including a former Harris County detention officer. Court documents state that on May 10th, DeAndrea Ford and 21-year-old Kitiana Taylor traveled to Baton Rouge, Louisiana to work as dancers and prostitutes for clients brought to them by 35-year-old Otis Parker. Parker was driving Taylor and Ford home from Louisiana with the cash the woman made there, according to documents. Police say text messages from Taylor indicate she was planning a setup to rob Parker of at least $1,500 in cash when they arrived at an apartment complex on Selinski Road early that morning. Parker was shot and killed. 22-year-old Jamal Brown, also known as BAM, was listed as the shooter, and 22-year-old Jarrell Wheeler was listed as an accomplice, along with Kitiana Taylor and 20-year-old Mariah Green. Jamal Brown was killed a month later in a shootout with police. He had been on the run from the capital murder charge. The three other suspects, including Jarrell Wheeler, a former Harris County detention officer, remains in jail. Now, all too often, we hear from families whose loved ones are missing, and we spend a part of our mornings talking about what's being done to find that person and the latest in the search and recovery efforts. In the past few weeks, the case of DeAndrea Ford has been discussed a lot right here in our newsroom. KPRC2 reporter uh, Rochelle Turner has been following that story. Rochelle, so this is something that we discuss in our editorial meetings. We discuss how we're going to... Uh, uh, report on these things, um, but you're here to give more details on maybe why this case isn't getting all of the attention that you think it should. Yes, and I'm so happy to be here on The Plus with you, Haley. Thank you, morning. yeah. So yes, the Andrea Ford has been missing since September 21st, and her family is very upset and aggravated and angry about how her story is being told in the media. There are reports of the Andrea uh, talking about her past, about something that happened, and her family believes that doesn't have anything to do with her disappearance. So I did, I spoke with her uncle, and he was very upfront. He wants to be transparent about her disappearance, and he said her being a witness in a capital murder case does not have anything to do with, with the fact that she is missing. And he believes that it, tidbit of information is what's stopping Houston police and other agencies from really just trying to figure out exactly where she is. He's revealed that detectives found the van that she supposedly got into the car or she got into the van with a man. They found that in another state. They found cell phones and they asked her family for DNA evidence. So her family is asking Houston police, why are you not reporting any of that information out there? But we spoke to her uncle and I wanna show you what he had to say. At the end of the day, we want DeAndrea back. We want answers. We want any of the two. Kevin Carrier says it's his mission to keep telling the world about his niece, DeAndrea Ford. The local mother has been missing for nearly a week. Tonight, police and family members continue the search for DeAndrea Ford. Today marks three weeks since 21-year-old DeAndrea Ford was last seen. September 21st is the last time anyone saw DeAndrea. There is surveillance video of her leaving the Divas Bikini Bar and Grill, where she had worked for two weeks and getting into a white van with a man. At the end of the day, the one thing that I know to be the truth is that when my little niece is ready to leave from anywhere, if someone's not there to pick her up or get her, sometimes for a lack of better judgment, she'll, she'll accept a ride from people. I mean, she's never had a problem with that in the past, and I've spoken with her about that in the past, but I just don't want people to get it construed or twist anything. You know, that was, that all spiraled from text messages from that she sent out saying that she was ready to be picked up to go home, you know, 
And for whatever reason, she elected to find another way home. Carrier says police in another state detained the suspect and he was released. He also shared that police found the van and two phones inside. And now detectives want DNA from Ford's four-year-old son. Put yourself in my shoes. I mean, what, what, what would you want me to do if I had that information? A quick Google search of DeAndrea Ford shows headlines highlighting a different crime. Have you heard of DeAndrea Ford? I have. I've been following it through the media reports. And, of course, there were several things that stood out in my mind. First, you've got a witness in a uh, capital murder case that's gone missing, and that always, to me, sends red flags up. The way she did go up missing, again, red flags go up. So uh, it's kind of disturbing to me that nothing has been either reported on her whereabouts or what happened. So right now, just from looking at it, objectively and just looking at it from just looking at the reports that I've seen, I, I would probably easily make the speculation that she went missing as a result of criminal conduct. Ford's uncle believes that criminal conduct is not connected to her disappearance and it's just a distraction. It was a drastic narrative to spin. People started putting the fact that she was witnessed a capital murder. A friend of hers was killed in front of her, you know, and they attached this story to her being missing. And one way or another, a lot of media, a lot of media outputs, a lot of uh, stations, reporters, they followed suit and, and a domino effect ensued. Everyone out there has a loved one that could fall into this category. You would hope that the attention would be on finding that person and returning them home safely. According to Black and Missing Incorporated, a nonprofit organization that raises awareness around missing persons of color, over 500,000 people were reported missing in 2022. 57% are white, which includes Hispanics. 39% are people of color. So what we're finding is that Many times in newsrooms across the country, there's no policy in place to determine who gets the media coverage. So I can call, my neighbor can call, and we can get two different responses. So if you have a policy in place, then there is no inherent bias as to who gets that coverage. And again, it's humanizing the missing individual. DeAndrea is a person who has a family that is searching for her. Person of interest in the disappearance of Gabby Petito. Earlier this year, Gabby Petito made national headlines after she disappeared. Law enforcement spent days searching for the 22-year-old and found her remains. A young woman killed five years to the day that Natalie Holloway disappeared in Aruba. The story of Natalie Holloway has been on major networks for more than 18 years. So what's stopping DeAndrea Ford's case from getting our attention? Day one, I, I do believe nowadays it, it's, it's sad to say, but your complexion brings about the attention that you get, whether it's good or bad circumstances nowadays. I hate to say it, black and brown men and women, you know, we don't, get, we don't get our fair share of what we need. We don't get the same resources that the others get. Well, I, I would kind of throw it back on where you work and the media. The media want, is the one that determines who ends up getting on the news, period. To me, everybody should be treated the same, and there should be the same amount of attention. I don't care who you are, what age you are, what race you are, what ethnic background. But the ultimate deciding factor is the media. As for Ford's family, they are not letting her case go cold. DeAndrea turned 22 on October 24th, and her family hopes she won't be just another missing black woman. I want my niece home. Her son wants his mom home. My niece wants her sister home. My mom wants her, grand, her, her granddaughter home. I mean, it's just that simple. And you believe she's still alive? I believe she's still alive. I'm going to carry that hope until I'm told otherwise. Now, HBD is still actively investigating this case. Now, Carrier, he believes that 
the man who gave his niece a ride is a regular customer at that establishment where she worked because he feels like someone there knows something. So his family is asking someone to speak up. Now, as far as Crime Stoppers, they cannot release a cash reward until they hear from the detectives in this case, um, you know, talking about you know, this needs to be told. So yeah, it's so a lie. I see things going in circles here. I mean, I think that Andy Kahn blaming, you know, the media for some of this, that's worth reflecting on. But, you know, the media doesn't, we can't report on a lot of things when we don't have the information. It does seem like everything in this case, it's like red flag of criminal activity, criminal activity, criminal activity. So I'm wondering why, you know, what are the police giving us? What are they saying, you know, that we could report on? Do they have much information? Not very much. I'm checking in with Houston and police all the time and they are still saying this case is just under investigation and that's the problem that the carry that carry Kevin Carrier wanted to highlight in his niece's case yeah. is that you know all even though there's circumstances surrounding her disappearance she's still a missing person and yeah. so he doesn't want it to be that she's a missing person of color she's a mother you know she's a a niece you know she has family that loves her and people want to know where she is. Yeah, well, I thank you, Rochelle, for bringing attention to this story. I think this story is worth a lot of attention, and it's certainly part of one that's a, a bigger topic. So thank you for doing this thank work. You so